Okay, well, here we are with Lacey Stern from formerly Flyleaf, amazing band that I found out only after I met you <laughs> got three years ago, and it's just amazing prophetic stuff that you're singing. You, you're always hurting for someone, you're, you're very compassionate, your uh, empathy is huge, you know, and just I feel God strongly in that, and I, I have similar compassion. And uh, just wanted to, wanted to just, just bring up that atmosphere to someone who uh, is struggling, even if you're a Christian as well. It doesn't doesn't even matter. But uh, if you're struggling, because uh, I'm not a scientist, but there's a Carolyn Leaf, Dr. Carolyn Leaf from South Africa, I believe, and I had her speak in our conferences, and she somehow made me realize that there's a difference between the mind which is spiritual thinking and the brain, which is a kind of physical part of us, they're connected, but yet one is actually like a little muscle there, like it, it has a physical. And and while we could change our thoughts and start reading the Bible as we're born again, let's say uh, people who are not Christian, they just try to be positive, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff. But the word is more than positive, is life. And mm -hmm. so anyways, uh, and so uh, thoughts are beginning to, to change with that. But then now and then, some crazy thought comes out of nowhere. I'm going, wait a minute, I'm, I'm just renewing my mind. I'm just in the presence of the Lord. But suddenly, where's that? Well, the banks have stored so many things in these brains, you know, mm -hmm. of ours. And it takes time sometimes to deep transforming, you know, mm -hmm. deep, you know. So anyways, I, I've sensed somebody struggling and you're Christian and you're still, mm -hmm. what's going on? And, and obviously... I don't want to say cliche, well, read the Bible and, you know, but yet God shed blood and prophets and, and, and uh, translators and men and the women of God to get His Word to us, His love letters to us. Mm -hmm. And being a young Christian, I, when I got saved here in America, I, I didn't have a Bible because the Bible is in Bulgaria all destroyed by the communists. They don't want to see it, the Word. Because young generations read the word and they find the truth, you know, so they, they destroy. So somebody gave me a Bulgarian Bible. And this hunger to, to read everything that he gave us to read, like his love letters. I mean, I just took vacation from life as just a reading, a slow. It took me a year or so, three, four chapters a day. I mean, I just read. I just went into it. I, I literally spent eight to ten hours a day because I was so into finding out everything that maybe we know. Yeah. Everything's written and I and and I want to encourage people. Take a break from life, whatever it needs, but get with his word and his presence. Because without that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like some organ, you know, they give transplant, but it's living. It's relationship. Yes. And he speaks through his love letters, like a poems and stuff. And you're a poet yourself and songwriting, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. People yet, maybe they don't know, but we need to tell young people and whoever you are that God uses the Word to get our minds thinking correctly, thinking structured, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And Anyway, but I know somebody's listening right now and wondering, can, can I be changed? Can, yes. Would there be hope for me? It seems like I'm failing or this or that. And I just want you to speak encouragement to someone. I really feel like yeah. someone's going to get encouraged by you. Well, it's funny you're talking about the Word because that is exactly what the yeah. Lord put on our heart, my husband and I, for this season wow. was um, feeding the flock. And feeding is you're giving the words of, of life into their spirit yeah. so that they come to life, you know. And that is the thing that without knowing the Word, it's... That's when the, we can't, the enemy can come as an angel of light and we can't tell, was that God or was that, that sounded nice and it sounded good and it sounded like, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. But then when we get out of the Word, it's like we can't hear the distinguish, like the distinction as mm. much. That's what the Word's for. It's like, oh, yeah. this will distinguish mm -hmm. when there's just this subtle difference of truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it'll keep us from being deceived mm -hmm. to be able to 
to renew our mind and to mm-hmm. be able to wash our mind and mm-hmm. wash our heart in the words of God, mm-hmm. in the letters, in the, the way he spoke through others in the past. And so then when he speaks to us, we're like, yeah, that sounds just like God. Like, I know that is mm-hmm. him. And then there's confirmation. So we've been working on doing that in our ministry. I, I, um, we just are about to launch a Bible study. We're doing a test run right now with my mm-hmm. friends where we're actually just having people look at the camera and say the word Mm -hmm. to the camera like they're speaking it to you, Mm -hmm. like a YouTube, like, reading. Mm -hmm. Cool. And and the thing is, like, when I was, when I first became a Christian, I had that same experience where I was, like, I I just hung, I I didn't trust people. I didn't trust. And we don't understand that when we go to church and people tell us, Open your Bibles to this page. They don't say it because they're trying to make you feel bad for not having a Bible. They say it because they want you to know we're not just making stuff up. There's a standard. Yeah. You know, you can make sure I'm not telling you a lie here. Make exactly. sure it's in there. Or some good idea. And then but... that's what the whole Reformation thing you were talking about exactly. earlier. How people got the Bible in their own hands. It's like, this doesn't say what I, what they've been teaching. Exactly. This says so much more. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we open the Bible and we say, well, they said this. Where is it? Let's find it. Yeah. And so when I became a Christian, I was such a smart aleck, like cynical atheist that when I heard things in church, I was like, well, if it's based on the Bible, where is it? And I would start to find mm. the, the Bible wasn't just like this plumb line rule, but it was actually alive. alive i had it i had a, a thought a question that would trip me up and i would open the word and there would be the answer wow. and it was directly speaking totally. to what was going on in my mind yeah and that, that i became hungry and mystified mm-hmm. and i would just like devour the bible the first when mm-hmm. i first became a christian and then when i went through that season of deception later on i remember i was my experience with salvation was so emotional so spiritual mm-hmm that that's how I discerned truth was like, well, I felt this or I, um, I, it was supernatural when he said this because it was like, he was reading my mind. It was this, this kind of like emotional basis. And the Lord was shaking that foundation. I was like, was it really in me or Mm. is it in your emotions? Mm. And so when I, when I got out of that season of deception i was like i'm never gonna say i can hear god's voice unless i can find it in the word wow because i almost died saying i heard the lord Mm -hmm. and it was totally deceived wow so i started to just shut off like that and i'm like if i hear a scripture then i'll go for it if it lines up with the fruit of the spirit in the scriptures then i'll go for it but if not i'm not gonna say i know (laughs) yeah and, and and that season was really important to come awesome. back to the scriptures. And it taught me again, you can hear my voice. Remember what I sound like. Renew your mind in the word. Yeah, so. that's it. And, uh, and I'm like now 40 years later with the Lord, I still um, cherish the word. And I, I, me and my wife are into translation we've discovered the beauty of translations and maybe maybe some of you just read one one translation is fine too of course you know but i've discovered in especially the last 20 years that different translations highlight something that others don't it's like they're all great of course you know but in the multi-translation i find the counsel of the lord and and uh the quote explanation i encourage you if some some scripture doesn't Joe, you don't quite get what he's saying. Don't assume first thing that, you know, but how about check it through several translations. Nowadays you can Google mm-hmm. 20 translation, boom, and see it. Because some, you know, there's an explanatory explanation mm-hmm. available through the translations, you know. And so to this day, uh, what I mostly cherish is uh, I have 12 translations with me at all times, and I underline all the time when I read, you know, if somebody is scared of that, I, I break that off of you, just go ahead and use your pen, use whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing sacred about the paper. 
the relationship with the Lord is sacred. And he can talk to you. When he talked to you, make notes, put it I mean, I put I it can, all in my Bibles. I can testify about the nothing sacred about the paper because I used to work at a Christian bookstore. And one time we were given, somebody brought a Bible back because it had two, like, two of the same chapter in there and it was missing a chapter. And I was like, how did this happen? Like, is this possible? Like, I know, you it's can't, human error. But, but it is paper. And, is and I think that's beautiful to, to acknowledge mm -hmm. that he didn't. Just like a marriage is not a contract exactly. with paper. Exactly. It's, it's a relationship, relationship and it's so much greater. Yeah. I think that's really good. Yeah, and I, there are so many translations, especially currently, that are very emotionally touching me. You know, like the message did that in the, eight, in the 90s. Uh, the Passion Translation is touching me, the Psalms. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a poet and you know how Psalms are amazing, but uh, you kind of get used to a certain translation. With the Passion now, it's called Poetry and Fire. It's like a flame, like the phrase just hit me, and like, wow, you know. And uh, so I totally believe in that and reading it all the time and different translation. that's the element. But I want to ask you, uh, I feel it. I'm not sure if you feel anything, but I feel someone is really struggling, even if it's a Christian, and saying, man, I tried this and tried that reading, and, and uh, I'm still confused and stuff, and I think God's going to give you a specific word for that person, battling depression, discouragement, mm -hmm. and I think God's just going to give you a word. So go for it if you feel it. Well, I remember um, as a Christian struggling with thoughts of suicide and depression and there's a couple things one is sometimes we discern things going on in the atmosphere and it's not us but it's it's an invitation from the Spirit of God to pray with deep compassion and deep empathy you know what they feel like because you're feeling it yourself yeah. mm -hmm. and to be able to just muster up your um, faith and hope in God in that moment and pray for whatever is in the atmosphere, whatever the persons or people around you are feeling. That was really important when I had my son. We were we pulled up to a um, venue. He was on we were on tour. Pulled up to a venue and there were kids outside in the line and I had we I had seen them walk past them and you could see some of the um, the kids that were struggling with cutting just cuts yeah. all up their arm and you could see you could just feel the depression when you walk when you went into the city mm -hmm. and um and my son is much like me he feels things mm. and he started to have a, just one like little correction like let's not play that right now let's do this and he had a meltdown and weeping and i don't know why i'm alive i don't want to live and he's like three years old wow and he started to cut his arm on his toy box just like scrape his arm because i was like if you're gonna pitch a fit you need to stay here when you're done i'm gonna come and while he was i was gone he was doing that wow. and i came in and i'm like joshua and i started to speak to him i was like god has made you to be able to hear and feel what's going on around you so you can pray. Mm -hmm. It's like there's kids here who don't know how valuable they are and they hurt themselves and they don't know they don't know why they're alive. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're thinking what you're thinking. And I felt this strength come over me. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't upset about it in the moment. Um, yeah. And I was like, so God is calling you to pray wow. and you need to pray right now because you feel what they feel. It's not so that you can say this is your feelings. It's so that you can say this is what is going on and this is an invitation from God to pray and when you pray it's gonna leave Come on. them and so he stopped and started to pray his three-year-old wow. little prayer come on God I th and he's like wiping his face God I thank you for that you love these people Wow and thank you that you know that their hearts are broken wow. and I pray that you would heal their hearts mm. and and he and after he was done praying that they would know that you love them and they wouldn't want to die and they wouldn't want to hurt themselves and afterwards, it was over. It didn't come back on him at all. Cool. And I went up to my bunk and I just started crying. I'm like, why are we in this place with our children? You know, like, but in the moment, I was so strong. Like, the spirit yeah. was with me. Sure. And afterwards, it was like, what just happened? My three year olds, to, to like, yeah. saying these things. Yeah. And I realized this is what he's going to have victory over. He's going to be able to explain this. And I was sure. like, I wish I would have known this when I was three. Because wow. I felt similar things. That's not me. It's exactly. around me. 
And so sometimes I think that's the answer, but other times I feel like when we are in that place, you know, and you're like, you're, you're, you're in your mind, which you're talking about. Um, and it feels so reasonable mm -hmm. to like, why it doesn't, it feels completely unreasonable to be joyful in the midst of so much going on in the world. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it makes so much sense to think, well, if I could just go be with Jesus, mm. then right. why would I not? And even Paul talks about it. I desire to be with Jesus, but I also desire to be with you. And um, I've had those moments throughout my Christian life until recently. I haven't struggled with suicide the same way. Mm -hmm. But the offer feels reasonable in the moment. Uh -huh, gotcha. And what always came to me when I was in those moments was, your life is not your own, you're bought with a price. Mm. And I would write that on my arm to remind myself in those wow. moments, your life is not your own, you're bought with a price. Yeah. And realizing that Jesus actually died for us to live. Mm. And if there's a life to live, He's worth saying yes to. He's worth living for, Come on. you know? And I always wanted to be radical and be like, I'll go to the place where they're persecuting Christians and I'll die for Jesus. And the Lord's like, okay, great. Can you live for me? Mm. Can you can you uh, go and be a rock star for me? Can you put on some makeup and like curl your hair? I'm like, I'll go live in the slums, you know? And he's like, okay, that's nice when you do this because this is where your pride is. You're mm. so proud of this mm -hmm. humility. He's like, yeah. but can you come here and do this for me? And it was wow. just such a hard, hard thing. Yeah. Because God loves those people mm -hmm. in those places so much and the influence they carry. And so I, I had to humble myself and <laughs> say yes. And I would probably roll my eyes at somebody as like a teenager. who's was like, oh, you're going to humble yourself and be a rock star or whatever. <laughs> Right. You know, but yeah. it's so true how it's pride yeah. in the end that we yeah. don't say yes mm -hmm. when he says, I want you to live for me sometime. Like, wow. you, yeah, great that you would die. And some people need that message. You need to die for Jesus. And some people say, need the message, but you need to live yes. for Jesus. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it's so important that we have that response of whatever God awesome. has called me to, I'll mm -hmm. answer. I'm not going to try to take somebody else's calling. Yeah. Yeah. If if you have a prayer for someone on your heart, just go ahead and, and just pray mm -hmm. right here and just I feel like I I'll, I'll join you as well. Yeah, yeah. Father, Thanks I thank you God for the revelation and understanding thank that comes from your word and comes from your spirit. Yeah. I thank you God for the revelation and understanding that comes from your bride who's mm -hmm. walked through things yes, that you've given us the ability to walk through. <laughs> um, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we'll fear no evil because you are with us so I pray for a revelation of your presence with those walking through the valley of the shadow of death they would recognize Jesus you with them that you are life itself mm -hmm. that you are the light of the world that when things overwhelm us Lord God we recognize yes in this world we have trouble but take heart we yeah. You have overcome, overcome the world. And we may not be able to stop all evil, but we can mm. overcome it. And everything, um, and we may not be able to do everything, but we can do something. Mm. So I pray for a yes in the hearts yeah. of those who have despaired of life mm. to answer the call to live for you. Mm. I pray for a yes in the hearts yes. of those who have not understood that you have blessings for them, that they would humble mm. themselves and receive what you have for them mm. and not be too proud to mm. receive the crown you want to put on their heads. They would stand up and in humility and boldness together in who you are and what you can do, answer the call you have on their lives. So I pray for freedom right now. Yeah, come on. Freedom come, freedom come. In every area where there's been oppression or chains 
that you would break them now yes. in Jesus' name. Break the chains off their mind. And I pray for those that have been confused yes. spiritually. Mm. They don't know the difference between your voice and they don't know what it's like to be filled with the overflow of their Holy Spirit. Mm. And on. I just pray right now you would go with the power of your Holy Spirit yes, and yeah. fill these ones who are desperate to be prayed for. You are desperate to have answers. Mm. You are desperate to be free. You would fill them, Lord, like Come they're on. asking, and overflow, and give them revelation and theophanies, and like and, and just displays of your love and power. Mm. And it would set them free yes. forever, all the way into eternity. Yes. And they would carry that freedom to others. Yes. And they would know the joy of just being with you. The reward of getting to walk with you is we get to walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.